So my fault, my bad. It's not doing me any favours, is it? <laughs> oh, look at that. No. Got a gear, got a gear. Could I even answer the question? I don't know. Have you got loads of makeup products that you wish you hadn't bought? Well, so have I. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through them and show you what I chucked and actually a few that I kept. So if that sounds like your bag, then please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because I make lots of videos on makeup, skincare, fashion and lifestyle for the over 60 woman. We're talking about makeup I hate today. Well, not really. I mean, some of it I didn't like and some of it I'm a little bit indifferent to and some of it was probably my bad for choosing it in the first place. However, I thought it was a fun title because you don't really have to hate makeup, do you? It's just makeup. You can always take it off. So without further ado, let me talk through the makeup that I didn't like and that didn't suit my over 60 skin. So the first product I'm going to talk about is a skincare product or rather a hair care product and it's this hyaluronic acid hydrating hair treatment by the Inky List, which is supposed to help control frizz. I didn't like it at all. I found it really sticky. It didn't control frizz in any shape or form. It's a clear gel. You're supposed to rub it on your hands and then put it on your hair. Did absolutely nothing for me at all. So oh, sorry, Inky List, not for me. Right, the next skincare product that didn't work for me at all is this Arduraline. I think that's how it's pronounced by the ordinary now this was all over youtube a couple of years ago and i was really excited about it because it says it's botox in a bottle which of course is a complete misnomer and we kind of knew that anyway because i know what botox is i know what it's used for and it isn't used for injecting into your skin because it's also a treatment for spasmodic dysphonia which is a an involuntary spasm of the vocal cords so I knew that it was very unlikely to be Botox in a bottle. However, I thought I'd give it a go. I thought it was a complete waste of money. It's like water. I know some people love it, but it did absolutely nothing for me at all. And I just want to tell you a quick story about Arduraline or similar. I was approached by a company about six months ago, who shall remain nameless, to try something that was similar to Arduraline. And do you know what? It worked amazingly well until you put any product over it. Well, and it didn't actually work if you put product under it. So in other words, you could put it on naked skin. And honestly, it absolutely tightened here and here and here. It was amazing. You could actually watch it in the mirror. You sat there for a couple of minutes and watched it tighten and smooth the wrinkles. But the minute you put your sunscreen or moisturiser or makeup on it, it just dissolved. And it was no good trying to put it on after you put your skincare on because it didn't work either. But a great idea if only it was actually, if only it would actually work. Anyway, this doesn't work either for me. So I'm afraid our Geraldine's going in the bin. Now, I thought we'd talk about foundation next, because as you can see, I don't have any makeup on me at all. So I thought I would show you three foundations that I didn't like at all. And the first one is the Revolution Conceal and Glow Illuminating. I think that I bought this back in the day when my channel was really in its early stages. And I just thought I need to try lots of different types of makeup, makeup that I wouldn't normally use, come out of my comfort zone, as it were, particularly drugstore, because obviously it's affordable. And if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. So this was the first one I tried. Now, I seem to remember... I didn't like it because it was full coverage. It says illuminating, which is always a bit of a no-no for me anyway. And perhaps I didn't spot that because I didn't have my glasses on when I bought it. But it's medium to full coverage. See, it sounds lovely because it says it's got vitamin C and lotus flower extract, which does sound really nice. So let me just apply a bit for you. It's about the right shade for me, I'd say. Let's pop a bit on and see how it looks. Well, immediately you can see how thick it is. Oh my gosh. I think I'll apply it with my sponge as I always do. It's a bit on the light side for me, but that is not the end of the world. Actually, that's, <laughs> that's quite funny. As I said, I didn't like it, but actually it doesn't look that bad. Anyway, let's leave it on for a bit and see how we go. I was a little bit worried that this would happen when I started doing this video and actually find some of the products I said I hate it I actually don't mind but anyway we'll leave that for a moment let's go to the next one which I definitely remember not liking 
but we shall see. And that's the Elf Camo Concealer. Uh, no, not Camo Concealer. And that's the Elf Camo CC Cream. So let me swatch a bit for you. I think this one is too dark. Oh, yeah, look how dark that is. That's very dark. But we'll forget the fact that it's dark and we'll just give it a go anyway. So let's just try a bit here. Right, let's just see. Now, why didn't I like this one? My gosh, it's very dark, isn't it? Right, okay, straight away I can see, having looked in the mirror, that it's very streaky. It's just not going on nicely at all. I don't know if that is showing on camera, but it's super streaky, apart from being the wrong shade, which, of course, is not the foundation's fault. But no, really not liking that at all. Let's see how this one's faring. Yeah, you see, I think this one is also streaking. Look, can you see it just doesn't look smooth? No, not keen on that. Okay, so that's the um, that's the Elf uh, Camo CC Cream. And now the final one. I can't remember why I didn't like this because I do like number seven's foundations very much. But this is Protect and Perfect Intense. And this is all in one with SPF 50. And I think this is a full or medium. Yeah, medium coverage this is. Okay, let's try this one. This comes in a tube. Now, this one might be a bit dark as well, but that's not to worry. So there it is. That's this one here. Okay, so we're going to, let's, let's try this on my forehead then. Let's see how that looks. I'll just pop a bit on my nose as well because um, I haven't covered that up. Yeah, see, this one is breaking up a little bit as well. No, I don't think either of those three is suitable for my skin. I think this one, actually, funnily enough, the Illuminating uh, Revolution one is actually probably the better of the three, but the other two are definitely not right, and it isn't just to do with the colour. So I think what these foundations have in common is that they're all either full or medium to full coverage, and I don't think that medium to full or full is probably suitable for my over 60 skin and probably something to be aware of when you're purchasing foundation if you are over 60. OK, so I've taken off the foundations and I've put my trusty True Match Blendable Foundation by L'Oreal. And I've also put my Elf Camo Concealer, which I really like, on my eyes. And so we're now ready for me to show you the other products that I'm not very keen on. Now, let's start with powder. And this is the Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder. Now, years ago, well, probably about three or four years ago, Nadine Baggett, who I absolutely love and respect, a wonderful British beauty journalist, I'm sure many of you know her, she raved about this. She absolutely said it was blurring, it was fantastic, it, it had staying power, etc., etc. I cannot get on with it at all. I really cannot. I just don't find it does anything for my skin. This is it here. So it's white, but obviously it isn't white when you pop it on. It's it's opaque. Well, it's sort of clear. But it's just so... It's just... I just can't get anything out of it. I mean, look, you have to re I have to really press on it. And I get that. I mean, I just don't get it at all. I really don't. But let me just apply a bit on my skin and I'll show you what I mean. So what I usually do when I've applied my um, foundation and concealer, I usually go in and pat around my eyes with a powder so that I can sort of dry down the concealer and sort of set it. So, OK, so there's a bit of fallout as I use my trusty brush, which I love. And then let me just apply it for you. Right, let's have a look. See, I don't think that that has covered anything, really. It doesn't really look that different to this. But I think it's vaguely mattified my under eye slightly, but really it doesn't look that different from this, does it to you? No, not for me. And the other powder that I want to show you, which I'll use under this eye, is this little mini that I picked up uh, by Makeup Forever. And it's the HD setting powder. So we'll try that under the other eye. Now, I picked this up at Sephora when I was in France just because I was um, waiting to queue. And you know how they have all those little minis as you wait to check out. So I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a go. It was only, I don't know, a few euros. Can't remember exactly. So, of course, this is a different sort of kettle of fish, as it were, a kettle of powder, and um, it's loose setting powder. See, I don't really get the difference between, I mean, I get the difference because obviously one is loose and one isn't loose. But my favourite powder is the um, Charlotte Tilbury Era 
airbrush flawless finish which is what i usually use under my under eyes so i'm not massively keen on um, a loose setting powder but i'll show you and i'm going to use the same brush because that's the kind of brush i like because i don't want it to sort of be kind of in particles all over my face i just want it to set my under eye concealer and my lid as well actually so let's apply it I'm just going to pat gently around my eye, see whether it makes any difference at all. Obviously, using a loose powder, I find, is more inconvenient because you're more likely to drop it everywhere. Now, that has set better, I would say, than the One Powder Wonder. But I don't know, It just maybe it's just too light. Maybe I just like a heavier coverage because my... Charlotte Tilbury definitely gives me better coverage and, and to me mattifies my under eye better while brightening it at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. I mean, you might like both of these products or either of them, I don't know, but for me, they definitely didn't work and didn't do the job that I had bought them for. Uh, the next product that I didn't like was this Beauty Pie One Palette Wonder. I really wanted to like this palette because it's an all-in-one palette. So in other words, it's got uh, eyeshadows, it's got um, bronzer, blusher and highlighter all in the same palette. In fact, I remember having these years ago. I think Mary Quant and Bieber used to do them. Mary Quant definitely did. Anyway, I thought this would be good. The colours are a bit muted, but I thought, well, we can live with that. That's OK. But honestly, the pigment is non-existent. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's swatch. Oh, as I've just said, the pigment's non-existent. Actually, it isn't on the eyeshadow there, but you know, you do want other things. Okay, let's let's do the eyeshadows just to be fair. Right, so those are the colours of the eyeshadows and this middle one here. Okay, so I take it all back. You've got pigments on the eyeshadows, okay? All right, fair enough. We'll give them that. Not that they're very exciting colours, but hey ho. Now, let me show you the others. So we've got the bronzer here. We've got the blusher. And we've got the highlighter. And actually, they're not that bad. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, right. I've just swatched these. And actually, the colours, again, aren't that bad. So why don't I like the palette? What was it I didn't like about it? It's so long since it's been in the box that I can't actually remember. I thought it was the pigments. I'll tell you what, let's try the colours. This is going well, isn't it? I'm not going to bother with the eyeshadows because we, we've got browns and, and uh, I've got browns galore. I've got grey, which I'm not all that keen on. Maybe that was one of the reasons I don't reach for it is because I don't really like grey on my eyes. And uh, I mean, what would I do with that? Don't know, really. So the brown would probably be the only colour that I'd want to use. So let's try the blusher first of all. Let's give that a go. Yeah, it's not bad. Not a bad colour, actually. We'll give it that. OK, and then this is a bit, I think this is not very cool for me. This is probably why I wasn't very keen on it. And powder highlighters, hmm, a bit sort of on the fence about them, to be honest. OK, so I think we've now identified why I don't reach for this palette, really. It's because it's got a brown, but I've got browns everywhere. I wouldn't use that. Sorry, this is the brown. I wouldn't use the grey. Probably wouldn't use that colour either. This is too warm. This is quite a nice colour and don't use that sort of highlighter. So I think we've got it now. Right, moving on, we've now got the NARS. This is another mini that I picked up um, at Sephora when I was waiting at the counter. It just shows you it's not a good idea to pick up these little things when you hadn't really intended to buy them. And it's this little NARS palette. Now, again, this is too warm for me. That's an OK colour, but I don't love it. And also the other thing about these, and let me just swatch them for you, is they're a bit shimmery. I am definitely going off wearing shimmery colours. They're just not for me. I don't know whether it's going to... Let me see if it's going to show up. Let me put this brush down. Can you see that they are a little bit shimmery? They're just not for me at all. I just really don't like a shimmer unless I've particularly wanted and chosen to wear one. In other words, I'm using a shimmery highlighter. I don't really want it in my bronzer. I don't really want it in my in my blusher either. So I'm afraid the NARS palette, I shall find someone to give it to because it's not being used very much. 
Now, talking of shimmery products, I did really love these in the summer, but I've gone off them now, and they are the e.l.f. monochromatic multi-sticks. They are great if you like a shimmer, and these shades are particularly lovely, and I'll just swatch them for you. Ooh. Help if I didn't do it on a bone, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, right, there we go. I'll list them down below for you. They're quite similar, actually, but they're lovely colours. Very, very pretty. And you're supposed to be able to wear them on the lips as well. But unless it, unless you've got perfect lips, they're just not going to look that great. And they're just too shimmery for me. In the summer, I, when I was on holiday, they were kind of handy, but I've gone off them now. And I don't think I'd be taking them on holiday again. And actually, on the stick front, this is my new favourite blush. I absolutely love this. You probably could wear this on your lips. I haven't actually tried it. It's the Revolution Fast Base Blush. And this is not shiny at all. It's just lovely and matte. It's absolutely beautiful. So if you're going to go for a stick, I would definitely go for this one rather than those two. Unless you like a shimmer, of course. OK, moving on to eyeshadows now. And I've got a couple of Trinies. These are Strengths and... Emperor. Now, the reason I didn't like these, and I suppose I'm just not really much of a cream product kind of gal, the shades, although very attractive and the pigment looks great on my fingers, but when I applied them on my eyelids, they just didn't stay. I mean, look, the pigments are great, aren't they? I will give them that. But maybe it's just because I've got very greasy eyelids. I mean, I know I have got greasy eyelids, but, you know, I've powdered them. But I'm afraid these just didn't work for me at all. And another Trini product that didn't work for me was this Lip Lux. It, it was a great idea. I mean, for slicking on your lips, it's this here. It's a lovely colour, but it's um, it's just really hard and greasy. I just didn't like the feel of it at all. Very pretty colour, but yeah, didn't really appeal to me on my lips and didn't really stay either. So I wasn't really sure what the point of it was for me anyway. Now, another couple of sort of cream type products that I didn't get on with at all were these Bobbi Brown long wear cream shadow sticks now it's funny years ago i used to be a real fan of these type of products and i used to wear them a lot i suppose because i didn't really wear powder eyeshadows much um, in my sort of 40s and ooh, 40s and 50s but i'm afraid these just i just don't enjoy wearing them i just not really sure why i would again i suppose it's the greasy eyelid syndrome isn't it um but they are very attractive colors there they are but I'm afraid they do absolutely nothing for me at all. So I'll just have to find someone who would like to use them. Right, sticking with eyes. I'm going to have to put my glasses on because I can't read this. This is Walk of No Shame Eyeliner. I can't remember why I've got this. But it definitely is not a colour that I can do anything with. It's a beautiful colour. There it is in the middle there. But I think I just looked like I was crying because it's that sort of... What would you call that? It's a kind of a mid-brown sort of shade and it's just not for me at all. I suppose it would suit a fair-haired, fair-skinned person, but just it's just not my sort of colour. I definitely wouldn't wear it as an eyeliner, so I'm afraid it's not for me. Now, another Charlotte Tilbury pencil, which I know I did buy myself because I love the name of it, and it's a rock and coal pencil. I used to have a lot of these back in the day. It's Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil. It was the name of the colour and the idea of the colour that I liked, and it's called Violet Elizabeth. So I think I'm going to try it just to see whether I still don't like it, as it were. Right, let's try this pencil. Actually, it's not a bad colour. I don't really know why it was in my get rid of drawer. I might hang on to it and give it another go. Now, these colour chameleon pencils from Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know why I've got this particular colour. I think I might have been given it. But I used to wear these all the time. In fact, when I first discovered Charlotte Tilbury back in the day before she had concessions and stores, she was only available, I think, on net porte and I remember Sally Hughes, the beauty journalist in the UK, did an interview with her on YouTube. And I just thought, wow, she's amazing. I must get hold of her products. And I like the fact that she had those. I think it was six uh, types of women that you might want to look like. And I think I wanted to look kind of rock chick. <laughs> I wonder why. And um, the pencils were sort of color coded. So I think I think there was a kind of a rusty colour for green eyes, although I've never been 100% sure that a rust pencil suits me. However, I do like rust colours on my, rust colours even on my eyelids. But this isn't really a rust. This is kind of sparkly pink. And again, it's that sparkly thing that I'm not keen on. Look, in fact, it's not even 
I'm not sure it is sort of pink but it's kind of a warm pink isn't it so I'll just um, show you a little bit on my eyelid but I don't think it's for me really I mean they're amazingly easy to use and if I could find a colour to suit me I would wear them but I don't know I just can't imagine in what circumstance or what I would wear that with really so it's a lovely colour but it's just not for me Right, now we come to lipsticks and the first two I've got are Natasha Denona's which I bought during lockdown. They're much too pale for me and I will tell you what colours they are. I've got, um, I'm afraid I can't read them, <laughs> I'll put them down below for you. I'm just going to show you how pale they are on my, on my lips. I mean that's just not flattering is it? Makes me look a bit sort of deathly. And this one's even worse I think. See what I mean? They're just too pale. I'd never wear lipsticks this pale, I'm afraid. So my fault, my bad, as the current saying goes. <laughs> the next two are by ABH and they're even paler, I think. Although, I don't know, this is too dark. This is a bit more Tisha Adams, I think. Ah, God, look at it. No, that's very Bieber, actually. That's very Bieber from back in the day and Mary Quant, actually. And this one... Oh, they're really hard. I don't know if they've gone off a bit. Oh, God. But again, it's not doing me any favours, is it? Then we've got another couple of liquid lipsticks. This is Melted Matte by Too Faced and this is Steeler. And both of them, again, are just completely not the right colours. They look good, gorgeous in the packaging. Oh, look at that. Horrible on my lips. Just really not me at all. And this is the Too Faced, that was the Steeler. Again. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Now we come to the last three and I'm not really sure why they're in the pile that I wanted to get rid of because this is um, Velvet Teddy by MAC and I, as you can see it's very well worn. So I don't know why. Hey, I just went on it. Oh, I see. It's just a bit too warm, that's why. I think I just decided that I don't really like this colour. And again, it's sort of in the same vein as the others that I just showed you. So really not kind of my colour. I think it's just too nude. I did actually a whole video on nude lipsticks, which I'll link down below for you. But the nudes that I chose are much more pinky. And this is definitely too warm for my skin, I think. Now, this one is the, it's a Laura Mercier matte. Now, I don't know why this is in there or whether I've even used it I don't remember buying it I think I must have been given it let's try it anyway hmm oh do you know I rather like that why didn't I like it before it's very easy to apply because actually I've got those Laura Mercier petal soft lipsticks which are also matte and they're in my new lipstick video. Hmm. It's not bad, is it? Oh, it feels very, very nice on the lips, I have to say. Okay, well, I think we'll hang on to this one. I knew this would happen. And then we've got one more, and this is Honest Beauty. And it's a matte as well, I think. Let's try that. Hmm. It feels very nice. Heels. Got a little gear, got a little gear. Could I even answer the question? I don't know. <laughs> mm. Well, that feels completely different to the other stick I've just used, the Laura Mercier. I rather like this. What do we think? Yeah, I think we'll keep this as well and give it a go. So there you have it. Those are my, I can't remember how many, products that I didn't really hate, but I didn't like very much. And actually three that I'm going to hang on to. I really hope this video has been useful to you. I mean, it's just a bit of fun, really, isn't it? It's just products that I certainly wouldn't repurchase and haven't really used. And they might not suit you either. So I suppose it's a bit caveat emptor, isn't it? Just check to see whether they suit you because as you can see with those lipsticks I bought during lockdown they really most of them are no good to me at all they're just the wrong shades that's all and I suppose the lesson I've learned is that I need to be more thoughtful and considered about my skincare and makeup products and thank you so much for watching it means the absolute world to me it really really does and I hope you're all doing really well 
and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.